I'm no longer a slave to fear. I am a child of God. You know, earlier, earlier when we were having our rally, um, my wife and I shared a testimony about how one of my sons had surgery this week. And I remember the first time we saw he had a lump um, in his groin. And he's only three years old. You know, we saw the lump and my wife brought it to my attention. You know, I touched it, but I didn't want her to see my fear. But I said, you know, it's nothing, you know. We prayed over it. And then it came back again. So we had to go see the doctor. So we went to go see their, their doctor. And they said, we have to take them and um, go see a specialist. There's nothing major, but go see a specialist because you don't want it to develop into something else. So I couldn't make the, the specialist visit, but my wife video chatted me from the room where he was there. And I remember the surgeon, he was just, he said, you know, they have to operate on him. And he was drawing a diagram of where they're going to cut him and all that. If anyone knows me, I love my boys very much. So I tried to picture him going through that. I was like, man, you know. And I just started to cry on the video. And, you know, they said there was nothing wrong. You know, they're going to do the surgery. So we scheduled the surgery and he went to surgery and... I had to go into the operating room with him and I had to watch them put the mask, the gas mask on his face. And you know, it knocked him out. And all that time I'm thinking in my head, there's fear like, man, what doesn't work? But I'm here today, I'm not crying because I'm sad, I'm crying because I'm grateful because he made it through the surgery. So when she sang that song that I'm no longer a slave to fear, I know what that is. Sometimes what the enemy tries to do is he's going to bring those fears. Makes you doubt the faithfulness of God. Makes you doubt what God can do. And as I was, we were preparing for this, sermon, uh, for this service today, you know, like my wife said, it's one of our favorite services of the year because when you look back at what God has done, what he's doing and what he will do, you can't but give praise to his name. So as I was preparing this session, I'm going to share for a few minutes and then we'll, we'll go back into here some testimonies. But I started to look through the Bible and I said, why is it important that we share testimonies? Why is it important that we share our testimonies? You know, Revelation 12 verse 11, it says, For we overcame by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of our testimony. It reminds me of a young man named David who had been anointed king of Israel. This guy was anointed to do great things. But then he walks in and he sees a, a, a giant in front of him, a Goliath in front of him, who can limit what God wants to do in his life. The whole Israel army was afraid. Nobody, even the king, the tallest man in the camp, couldn't stand up to this giant. But this young man named David shows up on scene. And he goes there and he doesn't say a prayer. In 1 Samuel 14, if you read down, he didn't say a prayer. He showed up there and he begins to tell this giant how big his God is he gets there and he shares his testimony he says you know my testimony is you see when I used to look over my father's sheep when the lion came I went after it and I struck it down when the beer came after it I, I, I went after it and I struck it down that's my testimony so who else is this giant who's standing before the armies of the living God. It says, no, God, the same God who is able to deliver me from those things would deliver me from this situation as well. So he entered that battlefield in the power of his testimony. And I speak to someone here today. I don't know what you're facing, but there's something God has done for you in the past. That same God is faithful. And as I was researching, I, I went again and I saw the story of the woman with the, with the issue of blood. 
And I was reading her story, and one of the things that's always amazed me about her is, why did she know that she needed to touch the hem of Jesus' garment? She's been in this situation for 12 years. She's been to different doctors. She's been to seen different people, but no solution. And one day, she hears about this king that's coming in Matthew 9. Verse 20 to 22, and I want to read that um, real fast. It says, just then, a woman who had been subjected to bleeding for 12 years came up behind him and touched the edge of his cloak. She said to herself, if I only touch his cloak, I will be healed. Verse 22 says, Jesus turned to her and said, take heart, daughter. He said, your faith has healed you. And that woman was healed at that moment. So I went back this week and I started looking at this woman's story. Why did she go touch the edge of his garments? Why did she know how to touch that? And I began to see that back in, in, in the, in the, in the um, Israelites' days, in their time, the edge of the garment signified your identity. God gave specific instructions. Um, you can find that in Numbers 15, verses 37 to 41. God gave the Israelites specific instructions on what to do with the edge of the garment. It says you have to have tassels at the edge of your garment, and you're meant to put a blue rope around it because it signifies that you are my child. It signifies that you're in covenant with me. It signifies who you are. So back then, when they wore garments, they put tassels on the edge of them because that was their identity. That's why when you look um, later in Ruth um, 3 verse 9, Ruth 3 verse 9, Ruth is talking to Boaz and she's, he calls her, he says, who's coming after me? And he says, it's I, Ruth, put your robe, the edge of your robe on me because you are my redeemer and the guardian of our family. Because the edge of the garment signifies ownership, it signifies authority. That's why in the Bible, the final prophet in the Old Testament, Malachi, Malachi 4 verse 2, it says this, But to you who fear my name, the son of righteousness shall rise with healing in his wings and shall go forth and grow fat like stall-felled calves. So I found out that in Hebrew, the original word that they used to describe the edge, the wing, is what's called the edge. So that woman who'd been dealing with an issue for 12 years, when she heard that Jesus was coming and she recognized that promise that this was the son who has healing in his wings, decided that if only I could touch the edge of his garment. But the story doesn't end there. Why do we share testimonies? She must have shared her testimonies to people. She must have shared her testimony and the word might have spread out that, man, if you touch just the edge of his garment, there's healing in it for you. So down in Matthew 14, from verses 34 to 36, Matthew 13, 14, 34 to 36, it says, When they had crossed over, they came to the land of Gennesaret. And when the men of that place recognized him, they sent out in all that surrounding region and brought to him all who were sick, who were sick, verse 36, and it says, and begged him that they might only touch the hem of his garment. And as many as touched him were made perfectly well. Why do we share testimonies? There's someone's breakthrough that's tied to your testimony. Why do we share testimonies? Because that's how we overcome. Because they overcame him by the blood of the lamb and by the word of their testimony. I'm no longer a slave to fear. I am a child of God. But I'm thankful for your mercy. And I'm grateful for your grace. And because of how you poured out yourself, 
I have come to sing this song out in praise. As we were preparing for this uh, sermon again, another thought that came into my head is that why do we share testimonies? Exodus 32 um, from about verses 11. And if you know the story of Israel, God had delivered them from a mighty place and he had saved these people, the Israelites from Egypt. But they decided that the things God gave them, they were going to use it to make a golden a, a calf for themselves. So God blessed them. And instead of using their blessings for God, they were using their blessings for idols. So Moses is on the mountain and he's gone for so many days. But now everything God blessed them with. He's given them that job. He's given them that family. He's given them all these things. But they decide, no, they don't want to wait for Moses anymore. They just want to worship something else. So these guys decide that they're going to create a golden calf for themselves. So they created one. And Moses comes down and he's just furious and God is furious. So God has told him, go see down what these people are doing. So they come down and Moses comes down and he sees what they've done. And God just says he's going to wipe these people out. He's going to destroy them. So please give me Exodus 32 verse 11. Let me see, let me show you what the power of testimony can do sometimes. Exodus 32. It says verse 11, it says, then Moses pleaded with the Lord his God. And said, Lord, why does your wrath burn hot against your people whom you've brought out of the land of Egypt with great and with a mighty power? He's telling God God's testimony. Next verse. Why should the Egyptians speak and say he brought them out to harm them, to kill them in the mountains and to consume them from the face of the earth? It says... <laughs> Turn from your fierce rock and relent from this harm to your people. Remember Abraham. He's telling God about his testimony again. Remember Abraham, how you gave him a testimony. How you promised him that he was going to inherit the land. It says, remember Isaac and Israel, your servants. You swore by your own self and said to them, I will multiply your descendants and the stars of the heaven. And all this land that I have spoken of, I give to your descendants and they shall inherit it forever. The next verse. Verse 14, let's read it together. It says, so the Lord relented from harm which he has said he will do to his people why is it important to share testimony sometimes can you imagine sometimes god blesses us with a with an amazing job but maybe we mess up the bible lets me know that even the lawful captive will be set free so sometimes maybe you're going through a rough time and you know you made mistake to and tell god god you remember how you promised me you were going to do this 
Remember how you saved me? Remember that time I was a single person and I looked for a husband and you provided that husband? Lord, remember that testimony? Your Bible lets me know that you are the one who started the good work and you are faithful to complete it. Sometimes you got to share that testimony with God. That, Lord, I messed up. But please, relent from your anger. So why is it important we share testimonies? Because sometimes you can force the hand of God. <laughs> so email Himela O Kaka O Yekerua Himela Himela Ezebo and I know that if we pass the mic around this room this, this afternoon, we'll hear several amazing testimonies of how God has been good. How many people here are just thankful to God for being good? That you can look at your life and just see how faithful he's been. I mean, we've heard testimonies of how God healed, how God delivered, how God expanded a business. I'm letting you know that the same God is still here today. This very moment, this very minute, to do the same thing he's done. Has he said it? Will he not do it? But I want you to keep quicken your faith in you. You know, like we shared last week, faith is not for the weak. Faith is for the strong. Knowing how good God is. Lord, we bless your name. And we testify of your goodness and your greatness. testimony about how she went to the doctor and, and got a report about certain things that could lead to cancer that they found in her system but we trusted God and we prayed now I'm not going to tell you that it happened immediately because there were times we went back for reports and it was still the same result but I know a God who's always on time. Because it didn't happen the first month. It didn't happen the second month. I don't even know when it happened. But he did it. And there's no trace anymore. Bless the name of the Lord. 
I don't know what that situation is, but the same God who's done it in the past can do it again. We still have too much time in this year for the Lord to do exceedingly, abundantly what he said he won't do. Going into a time of uh, giving now um, for us to give our tithes and our offering as we continue in this worship atmosphere. A tithe is 10% of your earnings, and an offering is anything you give above that. You know, it's it's not in compulsion, it's not to, to prove anyone, but as your heart leads you, give to God. But we know that there's a God who's still faithful. We know 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 that there's a God who's still faithful. I hear my spirit, you would laugh again. I hear my spirit, you would laugh again. I hear my spirit, you would laugh again. We know there's a God who's still faithful. Mountains are still being loose. Strongholds are still being loose. God, we believe. Yes, we can see. Wonders are still what you do. Bodies are being been raised. Giants are still being slain. God, we believe, yes, we can see, wonders are still what you, we are, we are here. to share their their testimonies um, we want you to please email your testimonies to ignite at jhdc at gmail.com and we will share them um, we'll share them throughout the week we're going to be having people pray up here um, for you God spoke to us about this service that he wants to do something new he wants to do something great so I don't know what it is that you're trusting in God for that you need someone to pray and agree with you um, there'll be ministers upstage to pray for you right now as we continue in the heart of worship. Thank you so much for coming. We hope you've been blessed. We hope that you've taken something away today about the goodness of God. 
And as P. Well said, for those who may need prayers, we just want to encourage you to come forward. There will be people here to pray with and for you. The service is just about over, but we just want to lift up one more song in worship to our King and just adoring him, really. It's a love song. So we want to, I want to encourage you to please join if you know this. start before the beginning of time with no point of reference you spoke to the dark and fleshed out the wonder of light and as you speak a hundred billion gas Sees a boy in the vapor of your breath, the planet born. If the stars are made to worship, so will I. I can see your heart in everything you made, every burning star, a signal fire. Creation sings your praises, so will I. God of your promise, you don't speak in vain, no syllable empty or void. For once you have spoken, all nature and sign. Follow the sound of your
I don't understand what we're trying to say. Exceedingly, abundantly, above. You can ask all things according to the power. In me and you, yeah. sing it out. God is, God is able to. If you believe it, just what he said. I can hear you. do that one more time. But now find your neighbor. Hold your neighbor. You need to tell him that he is able. He's able. Are you ready? Do you have a neighbor? Do you have a neighbor? God is able to do. Tell him that God is able to do. Yeah.